Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Cookie Tribe and the ongoing saga of the wrecked tea party of the Rosewater Cookie Batch. So they are still dealing with the fact that Cream just wandered in here and had her baby gravy right in the middle of the Rosewater Cookie territory. They cannot believe the audacity of this, especially because clearly this child and this nest are cursed because just like Snow before them, or maybe it was, yeah, it was Snow, who was born in this nest with spots so faint they are difficult to see on his white fur, clearly a sign of disfavor from the goddess Mies, so the Rosewaters think. And then here in the same nest by this, this atrocious wanderer, spots or not, has been born a spotted baby with spots so faint you can hardly see them but he does have them he is indeed spotted i love that it's with tiny thick pattern that's going to be adorable when we can see it better and he has the derp snout which would definitely gain quite a bit of uh like <gasps> gasps of horror from such a conscious like um such a vain tribe who are so conscious of appearances so this is quite upsetting to have to have such a wreck in their area and rose the second the matriarch of the tribe young though she may be is absolutely aghast at how they have all behaved and is demanding that they be removed from her presence. Little does she know that Kakiro is down here, but we're gonna go ahead and have Cream like be chased away from her child because uh, he's not old enough to leave the nest, unfortunately. And her mate and uh, Von Vonro and her other child are all going to be down here for her final baby being born. I am really gonna miss her, but I am so excited to see where Von Roro and Kikiro go. And I think Gravy is going to be told to, because he, he has no idea where his brother and his father have gone or where his mother went. He's too young. His eyes haven't even opened yet. He's so young, you know, <laughs> that's so sad. But he is going to be sent towards the cookie line, and the cookie line will take him in kindly, but suggests that if he wants to find others like him, to follow where rumor has it Anzak has disappeared to. And it's a very distant rumor, uh, but I think Lala, as a goddess, would kind of have an idea of where he went and why, because we have an entire tribe over here of nichelings just like him, with a gray body and gray spots, so difficult to see that they accept anybody into the confetti cookie batch who might not fit in elsewhere including Cyan, who is still working his way down to them, and he had run into the Wanderer Rarimi, who is now part of our wandering group of the side dishes we're doing. As you guys know by now, th that means that they're kind of like free play characters, where we get to breed them with whoever we want, and we're also kind of having, you know, side dish experiments where we can make the genes go wherever we want them, and then hopefully integrate them into our various cookie tribes in the future, because she has got H immunity and E immunity, and that would be great to get into our tribe, but none of the official cookie line can actually breed with her. However, we do have that scorpion-tailed male, Von Roro, so I'm hoping she hoofs it and is able to get over there to have a baby or two, and we could get some sort of interesting little line going over here. So that's my goal there, and James... James is beginning to get a little bit of an ego because he, as a rosewater cookie line, this royal family of roses, uh, happens to have antlers. And that gives him the boost on being able to go and bring back a dignified great hunt to show off to Rose the Second and the rest of the rosewaters uh, that Lord On might not be able to do. Lord On has claw. James does not, but James has antlers, so we'll have to see which one makes the better hunter, because so far James just got some bunnels, and Lordan has not found any bunnels recently, uh, and he tried to catch this mole, but it ran away. However, Lordan is becoming kind of the one in control of the Rosewater line, uh, not like officially, but like uh, commanding the other nichelings on what to do, to gather food, to clear grasses so that they can better keep wanderers out of their tribe, and so that everyone can appreciate their spots uh, a little bit easier, and also uh, gather up food so that they can have feast upon the Rosewater line. Uh, the Rosewaters 
Of course they know that you have to eat nuts, especially as a youngster, but it is fine to feast upon bunnels and feast upon berries because they are kind of like a, a little gluttonous that way uh, because it's the pleasures of life that they enjoy. All right, so we're going to go ahead and Raisin is going to enjoy the pleasures of her berries and Princel. Oh, he got some food! Princel is going to stuff his face before he wiggles over here to clear the last of the grass away so that he can see his reflection in the water once more. He might make eyes at Cinnamon, actually. We can have breeding between the tribes. It's just that it has to be with spotted mates. And Lordan is going to gather some food here and clear some things out and command Earl T to clear out that spot and to get over here and help with clearing out everything around here and command Snow to take a, a defensive position, keeping an eye on wanderers who might come from the cliff sides. So man the walls, Snow. <laughs> All right, and then over here, James is going to sniff for bunnels. He smells one. Oh, and he found a berry nest. Wonderful. So, or, or berry nest, pff, a berry bush. So he found a berry bush that they can gather for their feasting. And I think that covers all of the rose waters. It does. All right. Meanwhile, over here, Cinnamon has heard somebody on the other side of the river and has just gained a glimpse of Princel. And I think that she might be interested about what she sees, but he doesn't smell the best to her. They do actually share eye immunity gene, but we're kind of getting to the point where until we get those wandering genes in, we might have a little bit of genetic issues that way. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Uh, oh, yay, and Walnut is actually, I guess Walnut would more see clearing the bundles away for this family line as protecting the small bushes that are also under Mises favor and they're trying to, to watch over. All right, Salt, you can wiggle this way. Coffee discovered that wanderer like the awesome big-eared hyper child he is and he's gonna just dash up and down the riverway over here. Banana Brie is gonna come down and clear away some of the grass and keep an eye on this bush. Lala, who has like recessive bird beak somehow, is going to help with clearing away the grass because she wants to gather more of it to have tons of nesting material for any future babies. And we're gonna go ahead and plop Sugar Drop and Banana into the nest for their final babies because they are now going to bring the total for this side of the tribe up to 13. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we'll be done having babies until we lose out on a few of these nichelings. But Banana and Sugar Drop have been wonderful nest sisters for quite some time. So I think that they're ready for this. All right, macadamia is tending to small bush, big tree. And little almond has just been, oh, almond, your ears are so small compared to all of the others. They're so cute. Uh, little almond has just been introduced to how to eat nuts. And apricot would be asked to please go keep an eye on coffee because <laughs> who knows where he is running off to and to perhaps find a small bush to gather berries while you're at it, dear. So we'll clear that away. And then yeah, sugar drops just gonna stay right here. Almond will come and just wander as the babies do under the protection of Mises' tree. All right, that line's done. This line's done. And we're good. All right, there's about to be a little bit of a baby boom. And I think that maybe I'm most interested in right now is going to be Cream's last child now that she has been chased out of Rosewater territory. So much happened! And it's a spotted baby girl named Rolasi, and she actually kind of has brown spots. She doesn't really have, um, she doesn't really have, like, pink spots. But I wonder if Snow would wonder if that's enough, because she does have jeans that they like, but she has derp snout, so I think that she would be rejected by the Rosewater tribe. And I mean, Snow could leave his tribe if he wanted to take her as a mate, which he doesn't. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he'd have to leave, because one of the Rosewater's, like, lines that you have to meet now is the fact that they expect you to be beautiful, and they do not consider derp snout to be beautiful, which is quite atrocious if you ask me. All right, meanwhile, Rose the second, leader of this wonderful matriarch tribe, uh, is going to be batting this grass out of her face so that she can tell this little one, Gravy, that here, you can have a nut, child, but do get out. Uh, so he's gonna be sent to the next tribe. James 
actually just managed to gather another bit of food so he can come back with quite the haul uh, as his way of being able to like contribute to the feasting. Uh, and I think that Snow will offer to take in the spotted child and see that she is passed to the cookie tribe. She is spotted and thus a child of Mies, so she must stay with the cookie line, but you must leave. So Von Roro is going to leave and he is going to take his son Kikiro with him and they are going to wiggle over. Oh my gosh, it's this guy again, infertile dude, <laughs> hi. Why can you not pass your jeans on? It's a little annoying. Can you collect anything? I mean, he can crack lots of stuff and he can like do other things, but we're kind of beginning to get a little bit low on food. So I don't know. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him. He's doing some good fishing. And speaking of fishing, we're going to have our wandering nicheling, Rarimi, uh, wander past and just kind of glance at James as she slips into the waterway and continues on. Uh, yeah, and Snow is offered to take in the child so that she can be sent to the cookie tribe. Not the Rosewater line, though. Earl T is in charge of clearing away these grasses. And then Lordan, in his frustration, okay, there's another berry bush, will move around there. We've got Raisin taking care of these berries. There we go. Oh my gosh. Walnut is literally tripping over bundles who are attacking all of the berry bushes. <laughs> so we'll have him go ahead and tackle a few of these little ones with his daughter. And then over here, Princel is going to eat the berries, clear the grass, and scooch over to get a good glimpse of himself in the water. Uh, and then we're gonna have Cinnamon jump over and just kind of keep a wary eye on this mystery fellow across the way. All right, there's that. Uh, and then down here, we've got so many nichelings, we need to start getting more food. Lala has found more food resources, so she might call over one of the new nichelings, like Almond, to come and start taking care of these berry bushes. And we'll have her come over this way to do some exploring. And Banabri, oh, 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 oh. Aha! Banabri managed to defend the bush! So they're doing a good job of protecting Mises' second things. Uh, oh, and then look at the new little guys! Hi! Oh my gosh! She's so pretty! Look at her spots! Messy! You are like a little messy cookie. Oh, and she's named after like um, the goddess Mies, sort of. So we're gonna go ahead and name her Messy because I think that that's kind of adorable for what she looks like. She might actually pop over to the confetti cookies because they kind of go for darker tones. But little Vanuta here, we're just gonna go ahead and name him Nata. Uh, or how about Nutella? Nutella, Nutella, we're gonna name him Nutella. <laughs> He's not exactly Nutella, but he is pretty close. He is actually one of the closest next to Cinnamon for getting closer to the coloration that really shows the goddess's Mies favor. So I think that is gonna work out quite well, uh, kind of in Mies's favor, for instance. And then we've also got some bunnels that these two are hunting together. And a new berry bush. Good job, you found one of Mises' little trees, apricot. We'll go ahead and have Salt come and help because all of the children are trying to help maintain Mises' trees. Uh, let's see, and we're gonna have Banana. She's going to also help, is trusting the patriarch to watch over her children. She's going to spend what remains of her life helping out her mate, Walnut. And then I think Sugar Drop, again, trusting in the Patriarch to be able to handle uh, watching over the two remaining children, is just going to make sure that everything's going all right with this batch of children. As they spread out and they are at a full baker's dozen for how many of the main cookie line we have now. Congratulations, all of you. Meanwhile, hoof it already, Cyan. <laughs> like, whoa, okay, well, we need the food. All right, keep getting there, Cyan, keep getting there. Meanwhile, we lost Anzok, and in his shock, this Kravit died. Oh my goodness, and who are you? <laughs> oh my gosh, behold, the very first chip. I knew, I knew that we would have a lucky move with the confetti cookies if we just believed in them, and we do. Wow, this is the most nichelings I've had in a long time. We really need to get some more food. Uh, but little Chip has been born. I was telling you guys these confetti cookies were gonna pay off, uh, but him being born and Blonnie being in her old age, 
kind of points out to the tribe that they need some food and Shazak is going to be in charge of being the patriarch now. So he's going to ask his siblings to start helping him to gather food. They're just little ones. But Tamarind, he can he can look for berry bushes. So he'll be, oh, and look what he found. Literally a berry bush. So Tamarind is going to jump over there. And then we're going to go ahead and Blani is going to be quietly saying her final goodbyes to her children because she is an elder now. And we'll have Cyan come join them and help out with hunting and teaching them all how to hunt shortly. But look at all of the niche things we've got. We've got quite the awesome variation. I'm really loving this. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't think we have anybody on the nest this time either because we're kind of like maxed out for most tribes. Rose, I think, would definitely give it a few days before having some children of her own. Uh, at least until they establish a perimeter and start getting enough food for feasting. All right. Oh, we have so much. So many nichelings. So little food. <laughs> we're going to have to fix that. Uh, all right, here we go. We'll start with the confettis this time. And we're going to go ahead. Oh, we've got a little nut. There we go. See, Pine is helping out. Oh, and we're actually going to jump up here. There's some fish. And Tamarind is going to try to defend uh, the, the berry bushes from the bunnels. But he'll be yelling about it and attract Cyan's attention. Because he's trying to bring food back to all his siblings. And how dare these bunnies keep eating it. And meanwhile, Pinel, Pinely, who I need to give the confetti colors to, actually. Hang on, little one. I'm coming. Almost there. Oh, I always go too far. All right, Pinely is going to tackle these fish. Get back here, fish. <laughs> and Chip is going to hop over and help his siblings. We'll go ahead. Uh, should we maintain this nest? We're just going to go ahead and maintain that nest because we'll probably need it soon. And then we're going to let Shazak go ahead and gather up some food there. So whew, there we go. All right, the confettis are doing good. Let's see how our wanderers are going to be doing. Running, running, and I don't want her to drown, so boom, boom, boom. Rarimi is working her way over here to where Van Roru, eh, son, let's just set up shop here, is settling down with his son, Kikiro. Wonderful. And speaking of his children, little R Rasila, who will go ahead and name, um, maybe Graham. Which I think we've had one before, so she'll be, she'll be, uh, we'll name her Gree. Griham, Grigram, Grigram, or how about just Graham? We're just gonna call her little little Grammy, <laughs> little Grammy. <laughs> Even from a, a young age, she's called Grammy, uh, and she's being watched over by Snow, who's covering up the evidence of that nest that was by. There we go. And of course, Gravy has been told to get a move on. I think he'd be kind of cheeky and grab that food before he goes. Uh, and Rose the second is tending to her tree. There we go. And Raisin will clear those away so that she can be seen and also have some food. Whew. And we've got a lot of nichelings, so it's kind of nice to slow down for a second. But we are clearing the entire area at a pretty record pace now. It looks like the Rosewater territory might start spreading over to this side. And we'll have to see if the confettis are going to be able to establish anything or if they're going to just be uh, kind of like little outliers along the edges. Uh, and then it looks like with a bit more effort, the main cookie line might be able to spread down over here. And once we find every single piece of grass, we're going to have to pick which niche links will actually go to the next island and prepare another batch. This is going to be very exciting and also very tense because I'm getting attached to every single one of them, but I love this. So if you guys would like to join our Nicheling Pantheon, do please consider subscribing. And if you could, please leave a like so that we can hopefully get Cyan over to the confetti cookies and start seeing some really exciting colors showing up over there. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.